Okay, Enzo. So my first question for you is, obviously, when you was first approached by an ops, I just want to know like how the club was sold to you because at the time, it looked like we were all going so like rosy and we was up for a big season, but it just never happened so that way. So I just want to know what you was told prior to joining. Um, well, I had a, a good season at um, Crawley that year. Um, and to be honest, I wasn't looking for another League 2 team. I was looking for a, a step up uh, in the leagues. Um, you know, we started trading at Crawley, like um, pre-season was starting. And um, I, I generally thought it was not going to happen. Um, like I was talking to um, a few teams, um, but they, they didn't really make me feel like they really wanted me. It was always like, oh, yeah, we have to get rid of someone. You know, then we then we look for you. Um, but yeah, then not called. And um, yeah, Kevin Nolan... Um, talked to me uh, that day and like he really sold the club obviously I've looked at the playoffs and you just missed out on promotion and um, yeah I was like am I going to wait for a league one team who doesn't really want me or am I going to go to Notts County who really you know want me and yeah they invited me to come and look at the club and obviously it was a big club you know stepping in through the gates that day and you know, I was just impressed by our by the stadium and everything and you know Kevin Nolan obviously uh, you know big name so yeah they didn't really had to do much to to sell the club to me really but um, yeah at the time it felt like the right step for me yeah so would you say that Kevin Nolan was the biggest like influence in the move then because he sounded after listening to you just speak that it sounds like he was the one who really tried to convince you that this was the place for you Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we all know what what kind of um, character he's like. Um, you know, when you talk to him, you straight away like him, and um, it helped as well that you know the club was on the up. Um, you know, the the season before, um, and obviously the size of the club. Um, the last club I've played at was a big size was FC Utrecht in Holland, and you know they play in the highest league, so. Um, no, it was just like I was just excited to sign for for Notts County. That's fair, that's fair. So obviously, let's talk about when the season begins. So I think we had one point after the first six, and then Nolan gets sacked. So then at that point, are you thinking like, damn, this might not have been what I signed up for, like what I was sold at the start? Um, well, to be honest, um, it. The style we played, it suited me very well. Um, you know, I think I scored on my second game of the season. Um, and yeah, I, I was just taught by Kevin Nolan to stay wide. And when I received the ball, I had to just go at defenders. And that's what I love to do. So, um, personally, for me, it went quite well at the start. It was just like we didn't pick up any points. And when you are playing at a size of a club from that size um, and the expectations, um, which, you know, it's 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 always gonna be hard, and it's always gonna happen that um, you know the manager is gonna is gonna leave. And for me, that was Percy was painful because um, like he was a big part uh, of me signing for Notts County, and um, um, at that moment, I still didn't have any regret signing for Notts County. Um, you know, I was looking for a step up and I believed with North County I could go for a step up because the players that we signed that year, um, I would just say Christian Dennis, um, uh, Kane Hemmings, you know, they were the best strikers in the league at that at that time. And it was just, yeah, I couldn't really believe what was happening really. Um, but, you know, we had such a good squad and it just didn't really click. Yeah, for sure. I think everyone felt the same though as well. When as you, as you mentioned, like we signed the two best strikers in the league from the previous season, and then when that didn't really seem to work, I think that's when everyone thought, okay, well, this might not be the way that we all expected it to go. So obviously, Nolan goes, and then Harry. I think it's Harry Kill that comes in, if I can remember rightly. Hold on, it's it's probably a season I want to forget, but it was Kill that came in. Obviously, I, I, was he with you at Crawley prior to that, or? Yeah, he was um, with me at Crawley. Um... Yeah. 
So what was that? So what was that like for you then? Because you came to Knotts and this obviously Nolan, as you've mentioned, was like the the negotiator really in the deal, and then he's gone, and then obviously your old boss comes in. Was that something you was looking forward to, or was it something that you thought maybe I didn't want that to happen? Um, like I, I didn't really, um, like I was quite excited about it because. Um, I had a very good season on them personally. Um, but, you know, I, I had a free role basically. He played me in the 10 out wide um, as a striker and I picked up 10 goals and 10 assists that, uh, that season. Um, you know, before I left for Notts County, he begged me not to go um, because he was going to build a team around me. Um, so when he came to Notts County, like I was quite excited because you know, personally for me, I felt like it was going to be be good for me. And obviously the way he played, I thought it was going to work. But, um, you know, when when the managers are not, um, when the managers come and go and like we are still not picking up points, then you have to think, well, was it them or was it just like different factors? Um I can't remember when it was, but I picked up an injury. I don't know if Harry Q was already gone. Um, but that was my first injury in my career. And it was quite a, not a bad one, but I was three months out, I think, or just under three months. And it was tough because when I came back, like we we were really struggling um, at that time. Yeah, I think I remember that injury. Was it? I think it was more coming away in the first half when yeah. you came off early. But I think I think we had a caretaker in charge that night. I think it might be Mark Crosley, but I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Um. So yeah. So obviously you spoke there yeah, about how it changes, and uh, we didn't pick up any points following that. So then obviously Harry Cool's reign weren't the longest in the world, and then we had Neil Ardley came in, as you mentioned. When you came back from injury, you weren't really doing too well. So it kind of leads me nicely into my next question, which was. Like obviously playing for knots at a time when it's not going too well. How 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 like disappointing was it to to spend your first season in a surrounding like with the passionate fan base that we have, where when it's not going too well on the pitch, you can almost kind of feel it in the stands that you're not kind of getting the same support back as you would if we was at the top. Um, you know, as a, as a professional footballer, you you know that when it's not going well, you you're gonna get it really. Um. Like obviously, a lot of fans, people at Notts County, they've been so good for me um, during my time there. And when it's not going well, I I expect them to be upset because it's it's a big club. Um, like we can't be like picking up not enough points to stay up, uh, basically. So um, for me, it was hard um, because like I everywhere I go I have like a good like, connection with the fans and always trying to make t- time for everyone and um, but yeah when it's not going well um, like you, you have to expect that not they're not going to be happy well exactly that and that was obviously something I wanted to ask you about because I remember at Knotts and it's not something it's not the greatest of questions really because it's probably not something you want to be reminded of but it was something I can remember quite quite well was some criticism that you received like do you think that was like unfair like because I feel like in in a team that weren't really doing too well you was kind of picked out that's how I felt but I just wanted to know speaking to you today like how that made you feel especially when you're on the pitch trying to turn it around for the club with as as games are starting to run out like how how hard was that to play on the pitch in front of these people where let's say a few of them were criticizing you in the week etc um well when you are coming in um at a club with uh, a huge price tag for that league um like people are going to expect a lot of you from you um but i i got called lazy quite a lot um which i didn't agree with because um you know i was i i was an out and out winger before i came to Notts county um, and I was like being picked because I was very direct and like when I got the ball, um, you know, there were hardly any defenders who could stop me. That's why Notts County bought me and 
um, when you're not doing well, you, you have to you are expected to do a lot more for the team um, defensively as well, which I wasn't very good at at that time. Um, yeah, so like even with my injury, um, you know, I I got thought I was going to be out for twelve weeks, and I think I came back in ten, I think ten or nine, because I just wanted to have the club out because you know we were quite we were struggling a lot. Um, but yeah, you feel like those those little things they they seem to get like people forget about those things. Um, and there were so many times that I wanted to just put down stats on 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 the internet to see how much I ran that game because they called me lazy, but I always was in like the top three of people with the most um, kilometers in the game. So, um, yeah, like you, a lot of people say, ignore those people who say those kind of things, but it's quite hard when you are um, you know, trying to do your best. And when someone is saying something, it's very soon other people are going to think the same thing. So, I was feeling like I was showing people what I could do with my feet, but it wasn't enough, if you know what I mean. So, and maybe that was because of my price tag and what people were expecting of me. And, um, but yeah, that's where you get at a big club, really. Yeah, for sure. I promise you, this interview is going to get better in terms of questions, but I just feel like it was important to like ask these sort of things so you had a chance to speak about it as well. So, obviously. That, so the dreaded day comes, we get relegated. And then obviously throughout that summer, we have all the, the financial turmoil stuff. We don't know if we're going to get taken over. We could go into administration. We might not exist anymore. But you were a part of that group that stayed around. You prepared for pre-season uh, with the likes of Michael Doyle, Ardley, etc. Was it ever in doubt for you that you was always going to remain with Knots and just see how it went? Or was it a case of... I don't know, let's say, stay in and then say if we didn't get taken over, then okay, that's fine. We'll just go and find somewhere else, which I don't think would be the case with you at all. But was it ever in doubt? Not for me, no. Um, you know, um, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but I could have gone to Lincoln um, after that season. Um, obviously, the bid wasn't high enough. So, um, you know, they didn't even take it seriously, but... For me, it didn't even cross my mind. Um, like I was there for a year, we got relegated. I felt like I had to show people and help the team out to potentially get back in, in, in League Two. Um, and in that aspect, I'm a very loyal person. So, um, yeah, it was never in my mind to leave Nuts. And when you saw what kind of group we had that that following season when we sticked around and sat in preseason, like we're not getting paid, but we're still going to play because the fans deserve it. And, um, you know, we'll just go to the PFA and get it sorted that way. Um, yeah, that, that was something special. And I think um, that showed that season because we were getting quite close to getting promoted. Um back to the league yeah 100 percent. and this is where that's what i wanted to talk about uh to you next because so you've remained and we've signed pretty well i mean we signed some good quality players and throughout that season we had the likes of carl roberts obviously carl wooden who don't play for us anymore but for, for, at the time they were big players for us obviously we know that i mean some of the goals you scored that season i mean the barnet one I can remember very well at the top of the cup, obviously the one against Chesterfield as well. So I'd say you had a very impactful role on the team in that season. But obviously we get to the end of that season, obviously with Neil Ardley still in charge. And it almost feels like it'd be too fitting to get promoted straight away. But obviously we reached the playoff final. But I just want to know from, from your point of view, as a player who stayed with us throughout the relegation season, throughout the turmoil and etc. How difficult was it to play at Wembley whilst there was no supporters in there? Because obviously no fans were allowed in attendance, especially given the fact that, like, I've, I personally believe, and I, I feel like you would agree, that if uh, supporters were in, in the stadium at Wembley that day, I feel like the score scoreline would have been a bit different because obviously it's a lot different for, like, the psychological factor of the game when you've got people, like, urging you on. 
But obviously, how did it feel on that day to have no Knox fans around you when it was pretty much the biggest day in the club's recent history at that point? Yeah, no, like you said, if, if if the fans were there, it would have been a whole different game. Um, but yeah, I was on the bench that day. And, um, you know, it was very hard to watch because, um, yeah, it was very hard to see that the club like Harrogate was... Yeah, they were, they were just basically bullying us, bullying us that day. Um, were they the better team? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a lot wrong that day. Um, personally, I feel. Um, yeah, which I think I still think about until um, to this day. Like um, we were just so close. Um, you know, I haven't won much in my career, but. Um, like I got up that day and I said, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do it today." You know, we're gonna go back to the league and yeah, it still hurts to be honest. Yeah, I think everyone involved though in that game will still feel a bit of hurt about it. But it's what it is. Football is a cruel sport at times. But like obviously, we had that game and then at the end it was all a big huddle. Can you remember what was said in that huddle? Because I feel like everyone sees the picture and it was shown a lot on TV. But no one really knows what was said. Um, whew, I have to I have to think back. Um, no, it was it was probably um, you know, reflection of the season. Really, um, what was said um, in that hurdle. Um, yeah, where we came from, you know, um, that we almost lost the club, I think, and that we're now in the uh, playoff final. That we fell short, but. Um, yeah, we all come back next season and we go for it again. Yeah, 100%. And we did, to be fair, because that's going to leave me on nicely. We obviously had, it was kind of, well, it was a mixed season, but we had a good finish. But let's talk, let's talk about the, the, the real first talking point of that season was when Audley, Audley got sacked. So, and then I think that was after the Oval game and then you scored in that, I believe, as well. But obviously then Ian Birchnell comes in and then you sort of take up a different role in that team because, as you mentioned uh, earlier on in the interview, you started as an out and out winger when you came to Notts. You didn't know how to really do much more. That was what you grew up doing. And to be fair, you were fantastic here as well. But obviously, Birchnell, he wanted to play five at the back, which meant to fit you in the team. It obviously meant to play as a wing back, obviously, something you were unfamiliar with. I just want to know how difficult was that to learn in a mid season because. If you see players nowadays, they always talk about how important the preseason was for them learning a new role. Obviously, you had to do it throughout a midseason. I just want to know how difficult that was, especially in that time where it's a new manager and you need to impress, but you need to impress in a role where you haven't played much football in before. No, yeah, it, it was difficult, um, um, especially to see, um, you know, straight away what what his formation was that he wanted to play and. Looking at myself and thinking, oh, I'm I'm not gonna fit in this. Um, you know, what am, what am I gonna do? Um, but yeah, um, I felt like I have to thank New Artley and Ian Burnshaw, um, because they've made me the player I am today, where I can play in loads of positions. Um, you know, I think I've made that um wing back role bit myself um near the end of that season because. I think I chipped in with like a few goals as well. I mean that role. Um, like you said before, that I was an out and out winger, and all, all I wanted to do was attack, attack, and you know maybe wasn't as good at you know defending, tracking back, and all that kind of stuff. But um, if I look back now, I'm you know I'm much more complete in in the wing back role at this time, and where I can do both. So. Um, yeah, I think it had a positive impact that um, you know, I got to play in that wing back role. Um, you know, maybe not as good, um, you know, if I had a preseason um, playing in that role. But yeah, no, um, I've learned a lot, and like I said, um, I think New Hardly played me in that position um, a few times, and me and Burns also. Yeah, I have to thank them for that as well. Yeah, 100%. You touched on it there, really, that you said that you still contributed with 
a couple of goals, a couple of assists. But my my most memorable goal of yours from that season was the one you scored against Weymouth. And it was memorable because obviously that was the first time in almost, I think, what, it was two years, a year and a half, maybe, that fans were back in Meadow Lane. I just want to know, as a as a player who played for Knox at that time, again, it's a big club. I, I say it like it's like it's some sort of joke, where it isn't. The club's huge. Everybody knows that. I just want to know for you, like, how difficult was it to play that whole season? Really, where we had no supporters in, but how good did it feel to score in front of that court when the fans were back? Because I remember that day when the players came out on the pitch. Even even though there was only three thousand people in there, it's, it was honestly one of the loudest like cheers I've heard for a while, and even still today, I probably think of that too. So, obviously, the, I want to just want to know from you how difficult was it to play in Medellin for the whole season with no supporters in, but how good did it feel to score when the fans were back? Uh, no, yeah, it was very difficult because you, you obviously have have a push in the back when when the fans are there. You know, um, uh, I don't think I've scored a lot um, of goals um, at the cup end. Um, you know, during my stay at Notts for that day um, when the fans were there, that was my goal. And yeah, no, it was just like incredible to to score. Like my family was there that day. And um, yeah, I, st- I still remember the goal very well. Um, you know, it was a good layoff from, um, from Carl Wooten and I just hit it. And yeah, I can remember like celebrating and the boys were also happy for me as well. And um, no, it was just a complete day. Yeah. yeah I love that. So then it brings me on to the to almost not the final question because there's a few more, but the final like real key part was obviously the Chesterfield game in the playoffs. And again, the atmosphere that day, you know, it was just Knox fans. I imagine it would have been better if it was Chesterfield, but just from the Knox fans alone, it was a beautiful atmosphere. But Obviously, the game itself is it's pretty much enthralling, really. It's, it's so back and forth. But then we get that 94th minute winner. I just want to know. I can see the smile on your face appearing already. Yeah. Like, I just yeah. want to know from, as, when that ball goes in the back of the net. Like, I just want to know as a player, because as a supporter, I got the adrenaline rush you get is incredible. But after a 94 minute game in that heat, to see that go in the back of the net in front of fans that haven't been around. Obviously, other than the Weymouth game, I just want to know like that moment in itself. Like, where does that rank for you in terms of moments at Knox? Um, oh, it, it must it must be in my top five, really. Um, only because it's against it was against Chesterfield, um, you know, and um, yeah, ninety fourth minute, um, you know, to to knock them out and. Yeah, you like you said, it was one of the hardest uh, cheers I've heard um, during my time there. It was just, um, yeah, it was incredible, really, that day. And um, yeah, Mark Ellis, he had quite a few of them that season where he scored as a centre back. I think it was like a joint top score or something. I don't know. I can't remember. But yeah, it was just such a threat. And um, yeah, no, overall, very, very good, good day. Um, yeah, it's still quite disappointed with what happened um, in the semi-final, really. Um, I think maybe you wanted to touch on that, but um, yeah, I was I was playing out of position that day. I think I was playing in the eighth row, centre mid. Um, must have been because of injuries, but yeah, when you think back, like um, yeah, it, it's so disappointed, so disappointing. Yeah, I can imagine it was obviously the way it finished because I remember being sat in the pub because obviously, again, fans weren't allowed to go to Torquay. But obviously, that ended up being your final game for the club. And I just wanted to know, like, prior to that playoff campaign, did you have a feeling that that was going to be the final game? And if you did, did you hope that it would have ended in a jubilation of a playoff, like success, winning at Wembley, etc.? Yeah, no, I was I was definitely feeling that that was my last game. Um only because I still didn't really have a place in the team. Um, and I knew Ian Burnsnow was going to... Um, Ian Burnsnow was going to recruit, um, you know, the following season, bringing his own players. 
um, you know, I, I've, I've had, I had a good chat with him after that. And um, yeah, he made that clear, but he also would know how it feelings. Um, it was tough for me because I love the club. I didn't want to go, but obviously that happens, happens in football. And I'm, I'm only happy seeing, you know, watching last season and seeing the club getting promoted back to the league and um, club doing so well now. So, no, you know, leaving the club was painful, but seeing the seeing the club where it is now is, um, you know, brings me joy. Yeah, I love that. That's what I was going to ask you, really, because obviously you left the club, but even today you still get quite a lot of love from Knox fans. Like, I, I always see if you score a goal or if it's a clip of you, it, normally it's full of Knox fans under the comments. So I just wanted to know, like, how is it now looking at the club? Obviously, you've touched on it there, but a bit further. Like, how is it now looking at the club? Because it's almost what we're doing right now is almost what we sh we should have been doing at that time when we we signed you in the first place. If if you know what I mean, because we brought you in for the likes of we we when we brought you in for that big price tag, we almost expected to have the same sort of start to that season as we have this season. Obviously, it didn't work out like that, but that's football. I just want to know, like, from your point of view now, as ex player, who still has a lot of love for the club, like, how good is it now to look at the club, like, flying, knowing that, you know, after what we went through while she was a player in terms of the financial turmoil, that all seems to be behind us now. And what we look like to be doing is just pushing up, pushing and pushing up for the EFL. No, I think it starts, it starts with the owners, really. Um, you know, ever since they came in, the club has only been going one, one direction. Um, and the recruitment has just been so good. Um, like, as well as, you know, he's my, he's my mate, but Ruben, um, the way he's been progressing since he signed there in his first year to where he is now is just incredible. And that's because of Notts County, you know. Um, and, you know, where, where the club is now, the players that are playing there now coming from League One and, and whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can only see you guys doing it again because I've played in League Two last season and there are not a lot of teams that are going to hurt Notts County. Really not so. Um, yeah, no, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll keep following the club and um, it will only be good to see if you can go that next step again because that's what this club deserves to be up there, you know? Yeah, and I suppose my final question really is: Is there anything else you would uh, would like to say to um, the supporters? Really, because obviously, like I said, a lot of them still show you a lot of love. But I feel like when you left the club, you only really got you didn't really. Obviously, you tweeted and etc. and said by Instagram, but they weren't like a video like package etc. So I, I I just wanted to give you the time at the end of this to. Basically, just say any any final uh, messages to the supporters. And no, it's just like a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, um, you know the support I got over over my time at the club is has been incredible. Obviously, um, you know, not everyone was happy with um, my contribution, but that's where you get in football. Um, but you know, I've had. You know the best time in the club, really. Um, I've played one of my best, some of my best football, scored the best goals of my career. Um, so yeah, no, another big thank you to everyone who who supported me during the time. And um, like I said, I'll keep following the team. Um, you know, stay in contact with with people from the club. And um, yeah, I hope you you go one more again, and hopefully one more. <laughs> you know. It's never, never enough for Nuts County because, yeah, like you said, the uh, size of the club deserves to be in, in the top league. Yeah, that's brilliant. Perfect way to end. Thank you very much, man. No worries.